what is clear uh, is that we have to focus on 2024 first and foremost. Uh, Florida is a competitive state. Uh, and it is critically important that we build off of the momentum that we've seen recently, including in Jacksonville in this May in the in the May election, where the people turned out in record numbers to elect the first Democratic mayor in years. Hey, Grio fam, it's Jerry Keith Gaynor, White House correspondent and managing editor of politics at the Grio, and I'm here with Florida State Senator Chevron Jones. Senator Jones, always a pleasure to have you at the Grio. Thank you for Thank your you time. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, so you, you recently introduced uh, a bill that would um, change the standard for Florida's uh, education system, uh, specifically a very controversial uh, part of the curriculum um, about teaching slavery and uh, and the idea that enslaved people somehow benefited from slavery. Uh, tell us more about this bill, and did you ever think as a descendant of the enslaved that you would ever have to propose such a bill? Yeah, well, first again, thank you for having me, Aaron. Uh, I never thought that in my lifetime I would have to uh, file a piece of legislation to legitimize my Blackness uh, and to make it clear that uh, that slavery was not a benefit to the enslaved. Uh, and I think that the the black community and you know what to be honest with you um i mean our our accomplices they they uh they came in to 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 in in support of us to make it clear that that that's just the wrong language that is just not what we should be teaching our children and it should not even be in the curriculum at all uh, and that's why i was happy to put forth this legislation to take that language out of the educational standards uh for our middle school stu um, middle school students because it's just factually incorrect uh, in I'm actually running this bill with a Republican on the House side, uh, uh, Representative Beltran, you know, because again, yeah, I think even some of my Republican colle colleagues realized that when that legislation came out last year, um, that you know, it, it just it, it rubbed a lot of them the wrong way. But I must say that the culture that has been created in Florida and across this country uh, and the policies that they have championed. Uh, over the over, over the past year and a half, it 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 it, it warranted. Not, I mean, not in a good way, but it warranted the, these type of things to come about. That is, that is unfortunate. And the fact that we have to go back and and redo and say that this was wrong is just rehashing a conversation that we should have never had in the first place. And Education uh, Commissioner Manny Diaz defended uh, the curriculum. Um, saying that the it still teaches the tougher subjects of slavery. Does that mitigate the harm uh, that it teaches the tough parts, but still has that that clause? Yeah, the damage has already been done. Yeah, they, the narrative that they that they were trying the, the narrative has already been set. Also, and what they have been trying to do with African American studies across the state of Florida, yeah, you know, th that damage has al already been done. Also, because you have colleges and universities that pulling African American studies, certain parts of the curriculum out of um, um, out of how teachers teach it. They're retraining teachers how to teach African American studies to ensure that they're not violating the law. Some teachers are scared to even teach African American studies. Uh, and even those schools who say that you know they're not going to follow that particular part of the law until it comes out of the courts, um, the you have the universities are saying, well, they're just staying away from it altogether. Yeah, it, it it has created a true fear factor, a true fear factor to where some universities don't even want to touch it. I believe personally that that has that was their impetus all along was to fear monger um, not just educators but also that also our institutions and to put them in this type of place where they have now this fear of not wanting to teach. African American studies, or even alter the truth of not just slavery, but also Black history, which, truth be told, is American history. It absolutely is. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, uh, when he was asked about this curriculum during one of the presidential debates, on one end he called it a hoax and evoked uh, the name of Vice President Kamala Harris. It was a hoax uh, brought by her, but then, in the same breath, defended the curriculum and said that it was drafted by two descendants of of the enslaved. Um, is he trying to have it both ways? I'm not sure what the governor is, is trying trying to do, but um I can I can tell you um now that you I mean it's not a hoax, clearly, because it's in state law now. So it's it's not a hoax. Uh but the second thing is that you know the governor he he never takes ownership for the things that he knows 
um, that he has allowed to happen in this state and even things that he has pushed and also the uh, uh, the energy and the environment that he's created in the state yeah, has created these type of things, even to the point to where he defend these type the uh, this type of uh, these type of legislation or these type of acts and to and try to put it off to other people. Yeah, the governor constantly does that. But yeah, he he has to take ownership of this. Uh, whether or not he's trying to remove himself back away from uh, from from these fights, considering the fact that we are seeing across the country that cultural wars don't work actually is a very losing issue. We should check the results from the last Tuesday um, general elections. Cultural wars are not popular. And the governor is seeing that. So now he's trying to back away from a lot of these things. It's too late now. You the, the damage has been done, which you your failing campaign is actually happening in real time. And that's not a hoax either. Uh, but but in, in the truth be told that we in the state of Florida have been dealing with this type of um, uh, this type of energy and this type of environment from from the governor to where, again, he does not want to take ownership of the things that he has allowed over the years, him and his colleagues. And you have been a, a really vocal um, opponent of Governor DeSantis's policies, um, many of which uh, are really targeted against uh, an intersectional community that you that communities that you represent the black community the LGBTQ plus community um, does your intersectional identity as a gay black man uh, compel you to 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 stand up um, and speak against the governor in the, in these moments yes though yes my intersectionality as a as a black man as a, as a as a member of the LGBTQ community yes but overarching as a human being. I think I think the the us operating in in as as humans who so happen to be a part of the Florida legislature uh, is 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 how I how how I've been operating. I don't care who you are, and I've said this before when you and I have spoken that I'm willing to fight for and with anyone. I mean, against anyone who is interrupting anyone's human experience, right? Uh, and that is what we've been seeing here with, within the within the state of Florida. Uh, it, it's just that the interruption of people's lives. People who are just trying to live their daily lives, not be bothered, want to raise their children, want to make sure that their children are healthy, want to make sure that their children are educated, want to make sure that the money that's in their pocket and the food that's on their table, you know I mean, is is being made. That's what people want. But they have gone on this this uh, this rant and in this this lineage of cultural wars and things that are not making the lives of people better. And now they're seeing that, you know what I mean, what they've been doing is not popular. And now they're trying to pull away from it. It's too late now. You are uh, considering uh, uh, a run for governor yourself in the state of Florida. Um, uh, what compelled you to consider this and how seriously are you are taking taking this consideration? Here's what I say. I, I'm I'm really I'm truly humbled to to receive the uh, the widespread encouragement from from across the state of Florida and also nationally to uh, to consider uh, running for governor. But I, I, what is clear uh, is that we have to focus on 2024 first and foremost. Uh, Florida is a competitive state. Uh, and it is critically important that we build off of momentum that we've seen recently, including in Jacksonville in this May in the in the May election, where the people turned out in record numbers to elect the first Democratic mayor in years. Uh, we're a diverse state, and President Biden and the Democratic Party, we have the right message for Florida. And this this administration is delivering across communities. We're protecting Social Security and Medicare. We're combating the climate crisis. We're lowering health care costs. But here's what we are. Here's what Florida is doing. And this is how they are messaging. Yeah, Florida is banning six week abortion ban. The, the draconian don't say gay book bans. That's not who we are. We are a diverse state who we know that I know we can be we can do and be better. Anybody who believes that this broken bridge that we have right now in the state of Florida can be rekindled, where we can bring people back together to govern again. If that is what people want, and if we can get over the finish line in 2024, maybe that is something that I can that I will consider, and I will go as far as the people will take me. But until then, my focus is making sure that we elect Joe Biden and make sure Florida have record numbers and that we organize and we engage and we register people to vote um, in the 2024 election.
speaking of 2024, uh, the announcement of Senator Joe Manchin no longer seeking re-election in West Virginia is now putting a lot of uh, attention and focus on Florida and Texas as well, and uh, the ability to potentially flip a seat that is uh, held by a Republican. Uh, do you believe that Florida could um, unseat Senator Rick Scott in 2024? Uh, I believe that the Florida Democratic Party, Nikki Free. Uh, and those uh, individuals on the ground, our executive director, Philip Jerez, I believe that they are doing an amazing job in getting the message out of what President Biden is doing across this country. And they are ensuring that that hit people's homes. The other thing that they are doing is ensuring that they are registering people to vote and re-engaging people in the vote by mail process and re-engaging individuals in this political process. This is something that has not been seen within the Democratic Party in Florida for a very long time. Can we win in 2024? I really truly believe absolutely we can. The Republicans have shown that they can't govern. The Republicans have shown that their biggest fight is fighting woke. And so because of that, yeah, I think people are truly sick of this game that's being played and they are looking for leadership at, in the front end. If we're going to go on these constant wars that the Republicans desire to go on, then what is the other alternative? Authenticity. People want leaders who are authentic. People want leaders who get the job done. People want leaders who can actually deliver for them. Republicans are not delivering right now. We see that nationally. And we see it right here within the state of Florida with home insurance. We see it right here in Florida with health care. We see it right here in Florida with education, where we're number 43 in reading. We are not proficient in math. We're seeing all of this. And the Republicans have been in charge in Florida for the last 27 years. If that does not show people that Republicans can't govern, I don't know what else uh, they're looking for. Because truth be told, we're in a worse place than we are now than we have ever been when it comes to moving people along. Florida is too expensive for Floridians. Florida State Senator Chevron Jones, thank you again for your time. Thanks for having me.